Hello everyone. Welcome to Counterpoint Conversations. Uh, I am here at Apple Park with my colleague Jeff Fieldhack, and we are here for the Apple event. And Apple has announced series of products, right from Apple Watch Series 10, AirPods and AirPods Pro and AirPods Pro Max new colors, as well as uh, iPhone 16 series. So a lot of big upgrades we are seeing here from hardware software perspective. And the uh, dinosaur in the room is actually uh apple intelligence and how apple has built up the products ground up for uh apple intelligence and taking them into the new ai era so with me uh, i have jeff and we can start discussing about uh, what what were your key takeaways uh in terms of the big products announcements at apple yeah oh uh, well starting in order of that apple went the apple watch i think the 10 and the ultra all addressed um, the key concerns. It got thinner, lighter, better battery life, same price. I think uh, there was a lot of angst about the prices. And uh, yeah, so I think uh, the, the the Apple Watch came across as a uh, good quality upgrades. Great. And uh, I think Watch Series 10 uh, saw a good upgrade, bigger display, thinner uh, form factor, and they've built up the, the SIP package, uh, system in package, lighter, smaller, uh, adding more capabilities in terms of the sensors as well as uh, optimization of the battery life as well, right? They have a new design as well. They've gone away with the stainless steel uh, design and uh, brought in titanium, right? Uh, but again, a big upgrade for series in terms of design, uh, but also there are a lot of uh, other features which came in series 10, we can talk about some of them. I think the biggest, largest new uh, takeaway is the sleep apnea. Uh, uh, FDA approval coming on sleep apnea detection and uh, monitoring, which is uh, quite new. Getting the FDA approval is really difficult and expensive. And I think that's a uh, yeah, key takeaway that, you know, it's maybe a niche market, but for that niche market, this will be a go-to product. Right. And sleep health is one of the most important thing, which is most of the vendors are focusing on. Mm -hmm. And I think that drives a lot of underlying uh, conditions mm -hmm. as well. And I think uh, bringing uh, and focusing on sleep apnea, which well, Samsung announced with Galaxy Ultra Watch, mm -hmm. but uh, Apple is also bringing it to the lower end Apple Watch Series 10, not just for Ultra, right? Yeah. So I think uh, getting FDA approvals across 150 countries, countries is going to be super important for Apple to transform uh, Apple Watch into a completely health device. Mm -hmm. And uh, sleep is uh, another milestone in Apple's uh, journey towards making wearables more healthy, mm -hmm. healthier uh, fitness and device as well. So. Uh, uh, and then on the the Ultra, there were a couple new applications, also maybe niche. Uh, they're more t uh, focused on diving and snorkeling and that. But for those that are into <laughs> into the, the those activities, it's a yeah milestone uh, upgrade. Uh, Seven ninety nine price point, uh, still quite expensive for the uh, Apple Watch Ultra. For for, for, for the Ultra, um, you know, LT support. Carriers are looking for uh, you know more connected devices. This will help. I'm sure they probably would have wanted a slightly uh, lesser cost, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, seven ninety nine, uh, more of, uh, focus on athletics and, and that. Uh, carriers would really love up their, you know, the yearning for a five G use case. Not there yet. We're still quite a ways away, but I do think carriers will see this, um, you know, steady, slow uh, cellular connectivity uh, attach rates, and that will make them happy. Yeah, Apple has one of the highest cellular attach rate for smartwatches, mm -hmm. right? Uh, among all the vendors, and most of the cellular smartwatch market share is driven by either Apple or the kids' uh, smartwatch vendor, yeah. right? Which has LTE as a connectivity. Uh, with respect to Watch Ultra 2, another thing which I liked was the off offline maps, yes. especially when you're hiking when there is no connectivity. If you can download offline maps before going, mm -hmm. and how it syncs with the iPhone. And it has a 64 GB memory footprint, right, in terms of storage. Yeah. So you can download as many offline maps before going to that hiking trip or trail mm -hmm. where you don't have connectivity. Mm -hmm. So apart from the SOS feature mm -hmm. which they launched, I think offline maps is a 
must was a must have feature yeah. for anyone hiking or trailing in uh, uh in mountains and so forth yeah, yeah. And, and lastly, just the aesthetics of the watch uh, looks nicer. Uh, the matte black, uh, you know, uh, Apple markets it as, you know, athletics, but also for going out in the evenings. And that does have a premium look and feel, I found. Exactly. I, I, I like the uh, design language in terms of not only for the, uh, for the watch case, mm -hmm. uh, but also for the bands and the new butterfly clasp, yeah. clasp for... Uh, yeah. The Apple Watch Ultra 2 is pretty good. And they also extend the Hermes partnership to the Apple Watch Ultra 2, making not only a sportsy device, but also a premium device when you go to the party. And the band also is corrosion resistant. Yeah. So you can even go to swim and mm -hmm. uh, dive uh, with the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Yeah. So. And, and maybe one final point. Some of the, the applications, like such as sleep apnea, will be backwards compatible to last year's Ultra device. So, um, yeah, that'll make users uh, happy, um, maybe not quite help the upgrades as fast, but I think it is important, this uh, backwards compatibility, at least one generation. Absolutely, absolutely.